Hello everyone. I've been working on a few different projects recently and a couple of them required a USB digital microscope or at least something that I can kind of zoom in and look at things closer. For instance, uh, 3D printing, you can kind of zoom in and look at the layers and see how all that's working out. You can look at end mills to see if you have chip flutes or what kind of the wear is on the flutes and also um, surface mount soldering. I've done some surface mount soldering lately and it'd be nice to kind of zoom in and look at things close up. So I picked up one of these really inexpensive USB microscopes off of Amazon. I am not endorsed or um, sponsored by any of these products. This is just, you know, my own money and my choice as to what I picked up. So this is about $30 and it seems to be a pretty nice little unit. It is um, Amazon's choice. It is very highly reviewed on Amazon. And then I also have this little guy, which I borrowed from work. This retails for about $80 and is metal and seemingly nicer built. So what I want to do in this video is show you some uses for having a USB microscope out in the shop kind of show you what the $30 unit can do and then compare and contrast it with the more expensive $80 unit to see if there's really any difference between the two. So let's get started. Here is a closer look at the $30 microscope. I've also seen it for $35, just kind of depends on who you buy it from. This is everything that it comes with. It comes with the actual microscope itself. It comes with this little flexible arm that has a little suction cup pad that goes onto this little, um, I guess, rigid base. It's actually uh, more rigid than you would think. And it has um, nice little scales on either side. It's got metric on here, and then it's got um, non-metric uh, standard on the other side, and then a little grid over here with a um, label. It's five by five millimeters is each little square. And I actually thought that this was gonna be a lot kind of cheaper and flimsier than it was, but this arm is actually quite nice and it might be hard to show on camera. Let me see if I can get yeah, reflection. There's a little disc right here which is really smooth and this suction cup actually sits really nicely on it and um, it's actually pretty difficult to get off of there once you get it on there just right. So it's actually a pretty decent little um, setup. I didn't buy it for this. The other fun fact is this little piece screws off and on here, and this also screws off at the base. Both of these are quarter 20, which is really cool because quarter 20 is used on a lot of um, camera equipment. So tripod mounts and things like that are all gonna be quarter 20. So you should be able to very easily adapt this to um, tripods and other things. So let's look at the actual camera module itself. So here is the module. Um, it is all plastic. It's not like a metal body, but what do you expect for, you know, 30, 35 bucks? Uh, this big ring down here is the focus ring. And believe it or not, this is, this feels surprisingly decent. It's not um, loose or rattly at all. It has a nice smooth feel to it, uh, much like a good camera lens actually. And then up here, we have the adjustment for the light. It goes from dim to high. That is for the LEDs that are in the end of it. I don't know why you would want to really dim them because they're really helpful, but it is there. And on the very end of this, I think this is just a capacitive touch because it doesn't really press in, but if you just tap on this, it will tell the software to take a picture, which is um, actually really handy because if this is set up on the little base, you don't want it sitting there wobbling, pressing in a button. So it's actually nice that you can just kind of barely tap it and a picture is taken. And then we have, you know, a cord with a USB at the end, nothing too special. And it has these two little divots, one right there, one right there. And it just kind of snaps into place like that. And once it's on there, you know, it's a pretty good, sturdy little thing. So overall fit and finish, actually not too bad for the money. So let's look at the other one. And here is the other microscope. You can see that this one is all metal all the way around. It doesn't really have any plastic on it. Um, this right here is the actual microscope module itself. And it just kind of um, sets inside there, the screws and locks it down. Now, this is a decent little stand. I don't necessarily think I prefer it. It actually has a bit of wobble and a bit of play in it, um, whereas the other one's actually a lot more sturdy just because it's that kind of flex arm thing. Um, we got a couple adjustments here. You can go this way, you can go that way, and then you can kind of do this and that with it. And then you have a focus adjustment or height adjustment here that goes up actually pretty high and then down almost to the base like that. 
And then on the actual microscope module itself, this little ring up top, you can see it raises the end of it up and down. That is used for um, fine focusing. You can kind of use either one of these for focusing. Uh, the other thing to note is that at the end of the microscope, you can see it has this ring of LEDs. They are dimmable just like the other one, but it's actually in line with the cable right here with this little um, slider switch thing. So it has kind of all the same features, and this one is 1600 by 1200. I'm not sure if it came with anything else since I just kind of borrowed this from work, but here is what the other one looks like. It is a you know, decent metal base, but like I said, it's actually kind of a little bit wobblier and harder to adjust than the other one. So let's go see what they look like. These are the objects that we will be looking at through the microscopes. I've got a carbide end mill that actually has some chips in the flute, so I want to take a closer look at those and see what they look like. Um, we've got a 3D printed Benchy that has some issues with it, so I want to kind of zoom in and see what the layers look like on this. And then I have the weapon hub for my 30 pound combat robots that I suspect has some cracking along here. So I wanna actually zoom in and look at that cracking. And there's also some imprinting on here that I wanna take a look at. And then of course, just the shop rag itself, just to show you the kind of uh, magnification that these can do. I also might uh, find some random bugs or something like that around the workshop because looking at stuff is always neat under a microscope. So let's start with the uh, inexpensive microscope. So let's start with the shop towel. You can immediately see some differences between the left one and the right one. And you might be interested to know that the cheaper one is actually on the left. That's right, the $30 one is on the left and on the right hand side is the more expensive $80 digital microscope. Now here's the thing. I spent probably a good hour trying to get the shot on the right, where the one on the left took me all of, I don't know, 30 seconds to capture. The one on the right was very difficult to use. Um, I tried multiple different pieces of software. I could not get the resolution any higher than this. Uh, there was like a five or 10 second lag every time I tried to change the focus. So I'd have to touch the focus, wait a couple seconds, touch the focus again. Oh, I'm going the wrong way, go the other way. It was really difficult to get even this out of it. Um, so I was really surprised by that and adjusting the LEDs on made it kind of too bright and there was just too much of a um, reflection off of everything. If I made it too dim, I wouldn't get any detail. Um, so this was actually really, really interesting. So let's move on to the next shot. Getting the shot set up for the end of the end mill was actually pretty easy on both of them because it's um, you know, a relatively flat piece that you're focusing on. And also because of the um, narrow focus plane, it was just a lot easier to focus on both of these. However, I do much prefer the detail of the end mill on the left, which is once again, the cheaper of the microscopes. And next up, we have the aluminum hub. And on the left-hand side, you can clearly see that there is some sort of crack or fissure running down that line. On the right-hand side, you know, you can pretty much see it too, but it's just not nearly as clear or in focus. And believe me, I tried. This was the best shot that I could get with it. Here is a close-up of a 3D printed object. And the thing that I'm noticing the more I'm uh, taking these shots and doing the video is that the more expensive microscope doesn't do as good a job with contrast or uh, color rendition. On the left, we see a pretty clear black and white, and the black has definition and some detail. On the right-hand side with the more expensive microscope, it really tends to wash out blacks and tries to over adjust. Now, on this one, I tried with and without LEDs, and it turns out without LEDs was actually a lot better. Believe it or not, this is the better shot. With the LEDs, it just um, reflected right back into the lens, and all you saw was just a big glare. You couldn't even see any of the part. So then when I turned off the LEDs, this is what you get, this kind of washed out mess. And of course, no test of a USB microscope would be complete without some sort of coin. So here is a close-up of the nickel. Well, actually on the left-hand side, there is a nickel, and on the right-hand side, there is some blotchy, unfocused mess that maybe could come across as a nickel. And lastly, the main reason I really got this was to look at surface mount components. Uh, these are all 0603 SMD resistors and capacitors on a Raspberry Pi. And um, here you can see that they both do a reasonable job. I think, you know, for actually using this to see if there's cold solder joints or something like that, I think they'd both be fine. Um, but of course, the left-hand side, the cheaper one is a lot better in my opinion. 
So there you have it, the comparison between an $80 USB microscope and a $30 or $35 USB microscope that you can find on Amazon. The results were very surprising. I very, very much preferred this one over the more expensive one. The build quality and the look of this one seems like it would be a lot better, but I will never touch this thing again. I will never use it again. I never want to see it in my sight. This thing was really annoying. Uh, when I have products I don't really like, I tend to ramble on a lot. So I'm not going to talk about all the negatives because this would very quickly become an hour video. Suffice it to say, the LEDs are nearly useless on this. All the surfaces of this just reflect. There's no diffuser on the end of it. So it's just glare city. Um, the adjustment is really, really difficult. The software is slow. It's just an absolute nightmare to use in comparison with this. This one was very surprising. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the quality of some of the images. Um, I mean, it's you know, only 1600 by 1200, so it's not like macro photography or anything, but you could always see what you're trying to see with this one. Uh, the LED setup is actually really good. The diffuser, you could never see the LEDs. It was just always a nice soft light, so that's pretty cool. And the software was a lot quicker, and this little picture button on the end was great as well. I'm glad that we had this one at work because I probably would have bought this one and been very unhappy with it and assumed that this one was going to be even worse. So I'm glad I actually went for the cheaper one and you're going to start seeing this in a few upcoming videos just as I zoom in on things and get a better shot. So um, hopefully you got something out of that. Thanks for watching. You can check me out on Facebook for all my kind of little updates and things like that. You can also check me out on Patreon to see the channels that I support or go ahead and support my channel. So again, thanks for watching.